Hello everyone, welcome to the Desolation Sounds podcast. My name is Stephen Hook and this is a podcast celebrating everything to do within the world of alternative music, be that rock, punk, metal or even extreme metal. Coming up on this week's show, we've got all the latest news from Milk Teeth, Mallory Knox and Every Time I Die, as well as new music and new albums, all from the likes of Don Broker, Fall Out Boy, Weezer, Green Day, Cal Decapitation and Tiny Moving Parts. There's so much, there's just, just a dang old bunch. Uh, and album reviews come from the likes of Sleep Talk, Minor Love, and that fucking Tool album is here as well. But, as ever, we will start with the news. Um, every Time I Die, are in the studio. That's exciting, isn't it? Uh, starting on album number nine, the only thing that's out at the moment is just a picture of them in the studio that came out on Twitter that said something along the lines of beginning work on album number nine. That, they're lovely and vague, lovely and vague. Um, as, as someone who's recently gone in on their latest album, was it Hot Damn, whatever it is, um, I'm more looking forward to, this, forward to this than I previously was. Um, but yeah, I'm sure with Every Time I Die, it will be jolly good stuff. Hopefully it won't be as like heart-crushing as the previous album, but who knows. Uh Slightly sadder news, Mallory Knox have announced they're going to split up after 10 years. Um, they're going to do one last, oh fuck, one last UK tour and they're going to fade off into the distance. Uh, I feel like Mallory Knox is one of the better bands from that really, really, really awful phase of like the turn of the decade alt-rock boy bands. So you, you, you knew me at sixes, your kids in glass houses, blitz kids, young guns. And the only ones out of them I really, really enjoyed were blitz kids. Not that. Uh, I enjoyed the, the like EPs of blitz kids. And then when I realized that when the album started coming out and I found out more about them as people started to get very much away from blitz kids. Um, young guns was all right. That first album was pretty good. And then just, Drips and drabs from the second one, and then it become very, very pop. With Mallory Knox, Signals was quite good. I always felt Lee Singh had quite a good voice. It wasn't quite as twee and as sickly sweet as the others. But there we go. Mallory Knox called it a day. Who knows what they'll do next? I, I feel like they also got like the worst run. I feel like everyone else had quite a big hype behind them. Mallory Knox sort of like died off quite dramatically after Signals. I think they were just a little bit too crunchy for that way, but I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Um, and again, even more sad news again, because it's an actual band that I very much enjoy. Ollie Holbrook has announced that he is to leave uh, Milk Teeth. Uh, it is all very amicable. He is left to, produ to produce, to pursue a new career. Uh, the trials and tribulations of being in a band as being reported by new and upcoming bands is not an easy one and he's decided to a very brave step to uh, walk away from it all and to pursue a new career so best of luck to him it, I think it will be it's not often you can say the drummer will be a key noticeable difference in a band um, he really invested himself into those live shows just as much as he could watching him I've seen Milk Teeth a couple of times. Just watching him, the faces he pulls, the energy he has is just unreal. And then watching him in like little videos and little lives that Milk Teeth do, he seemed like a really, really fun dude as well. So best of luck to him. The XA he is a very, he's apparently a very lovely man. He's being replaced by Jack Kenny of Nervous. Um, which I'm all for like i feel like i've like the way i've proceeded that i've got bad things to say about jack kitty i don't like i really like that the everything is, is it everything is fine um album by nervous no that's not someone else that last al album by nervous i had the pink cover i'm not very good with names you know this um but as a whole moti has been getting like a weirdly bad rap at the moment um because they've decided to outwardly talk about politics, which, you know, I'll be the first to admit, like, I don't usually like politics that much, but this is a very punk rock thing. Punk rock bands talk about politics. Dead Kennedy's most famous song is Nazi Punk's Fuck Off. 
Um, and there was one comment that I saw in response to this is why don't they just call it the Becky Blomfield experience? The same reason they don't call Cradle of Filth Danny Filth experience or fucking the Axl Rose journey, you fucking twat burglar. Leave him the fuck alone. Um, I think, I know Milk have got a new tour coming up. It's going to hit Lincoln and I'm going to try my best to get on that because very, very excited. And yeah, just again, best of luck to Ollie. And... I, I think that about covers it. I keep saying and as if I've got something else to say. I just don't. I just very, very precious of, of my milk teeth. Uh, on to new music then. There's a fair old bunch, even some that I didn't really know. Uh, we'll start with Don Broco. They've got a new song out called Action. Um, it features Caleb Shoma from Bil- B- Bilk Teeth, Beartooth, uh, Tyler Carter from Issues, Taka Moriuchi, I hope I got that right, from 1OK Rock, and Tillian Pearson from Dance Gavin Dance. It covers possibly every musical genre ever made. It is a mad cacophony of sound. Um, but I think it does quite well to... Like, all the people who are featured in the, in the song, I think it does a really good job of getting their own little vocal ticks in and, like, what they're known for. So you've got, like, Caleb Screams, you've got Tyler's, like, R&B vocalising thing. I really wasn't keen on that at first. A um, couple more listens, and I'm just like, it slowly grew on me. Excuse me, I'm doing that thing where I die a bit again. But yeah, I don't know if there's an album. There's no album news. I think it just might might just be a standalone single of them having fun. I think it'd be a good way because, let's face it, of all those bands, Don Broco are the most mainstream, popular, or mainstream accessible. So. Getting new eyes onto those other bands would be really, really good. I know for a fact I've um, checked out Dance Given Dance as a result of Tillian's um, feature. So, yeah, it's a fun song. Go check it out. It's called Action by Don Broco. Um, and in amongst all the news and in amongst all the new music and like a weird middle point, there is the Hella Mega Tour, which features Green Day, Weezer and Fall Out Boy. Um, it's going to hitting I think it's a worldwide one um some point next year I think it's June next year it starts May June that sort of time I know it's in England or UK that sort of time because I tried to buy I tried to look at what ticket prices were like I couldn't load up the web page on my phone the only thing I found on Twitter was that it's very very expensive so I probably won't be going to that either way all three bands have released a new song and have got some kind of album on the way to go alongside the Hella Mega Tour. We'll start with Fall Out Boy. Their song is called Dear Future Self Hands Up. Um, it features Wyclef Jean and... Wyclef Jean? Wyclef Jean? We'll go with Wyclef Jean. It's not a bad song. It's actually quite catchy. Up until Wyclef Jean starts rapping or singing or whatever he does on it. And then it becomes a very, very mediocre song because I don't think I like Wyclef Jean that much. It's just fucking news alert, but it's a lot more upbeat. It's a lot more organic. It's got more actual instruments in. It feels like something from, say, rock and roll era thing, or era song, I should say. Um, And their announcement is the only one that's not quite a full album. It is... um, They've announced a new Greatest Hits album, basically. It's called Greatest Hits Believers Never Die Volume 2, after Volume 1. That was released 10 years ago. I think it's coming out by the end of... I think it's end of November. Um, and yeah, hopefully if post-mania Fall Out Boy sounds like this, it won't quite be the same as Infinite on a High off from Under the Cork, oh, cork Tree. Yeah. But I quite like, say, Rock and Roll, so hopefully it's more like that and it won't be like American Beauty, Moken Psycho or Mania because they're all shit. All that fucking EP they did. They had like a full punk rock EP. And I was so excited for it. I think the Pax Am session, something like that. Fucking awful. Oh my god. Um, on to, we'll go with Green Day next. Uh, their album is going to be called Father of All Motherfuckers. Pleasant. Um, the lead single is called Father of All Motherfuckers as well. It's, you know, we've got that current wave at the moment of, it's not quite stoner rock, but it's not quite full indie rock. Like Band of Skulls sort of thing, or what, um, I was going to say Wolf Mother, but they're a bit more heavy than that. But, you know what I mean? It's sort of things where the cool Ice Gem haircut kids, they don't listen to Indie anymore because it's for 
hipsters, yet they listen to this all the time because they, they just love guitar music. Um, I thought it kind of sounded like discount modern Queens of Stone Age. It's it's just odd. He's got like a, a, quite a high pitched vocal on the verses, and then it's a little bit more very modern Green Day in the chorus. I'm still not sure if I like it or not, and I love Green Day. Um, it does break my tiny little heart to hear in the announcement that came with the Hello Mega Tour and then eventually the album. Uh, Billy Joe wrote this like multi-tweet escapade and a he sounds completely off his nut b he's joining the crowd where it says um rock has lost its bite or something like that and that hurts me that hurts me deep in my soul he's going that way he's i can't wait for it to say like rock is dead because i'll probably have a cry in the corner um their album father of all my fuck Father of all motherfuckers. Uh, that's coming out the 7th of February next year. So we got a wee old while. And then the last of the three, we've got Weezer with their album, Van Weezer. It, just, the album cover looks exactly like you expect it to be for a, a album cover album name called Van Weezer. That's coming out the 15th of May next year. Again, even longer. Um, and their song is called The End of the Game. And it's back to the uber power pop version of Weezer with like really crunchy guitar tone it immediately shits on anything the teal album or the black album did i really really like end of the game um and out of those three bands weezer is typically the one i would like avoid the most i because i just prefer the other two or used to prefer the other two now i don't know what's real um yeah i i feel like everyone's quite aware of weezer now um it's not i thought uh, the White Album was quite was a little bit more spacey, a little bit more dreamy. This goes back to that sort of 2000s. It's borderline. It's not out and out power pop, but for some reason it's not quite punk rock at the same time. But it's also still not pop punk or pop rock or anything like that. It's a really fun song. It's called End of the Game. It's going to be part of the Van Weezer album that's coming out 15th of May next year. Go listen to it. Go have some fun. Now for something completely different. Cattle Decapitation. Oh, what a band. Their new album, Death Atlas. I did not comment on it when it first got announced. I don't think. I can't remember that much. Um, the album's coming out the 29th of November this year. Very excited. But they have a new so new single out. It's called One Day Closer to the End of the World. Oh, it's good. It's a good time. It's a good time if you like being punched in the head a lot. Um, it feels more death metal than the Anthropocene era, uh, the Anthropocene extension, sorry. Um, it still has those distorted, like, cleans. I want to put mega finger quotations on the queen cleans phrase because I don't quite know how to describe them. Apart from it sounds like a new wave of British heavy metal singer getting waterboarded. Um, the double kicks on the bridge, on the uh, bridge, when they double in speed, that's oh, all it's a hell of a power play. It sounds so good. And it really gets you amped up. I'm very excited by all this. I loved um, Anthropocene Extinction. I love the album that came before it, which I can't remember what it was called. Is it Extinction of Humanity? Doesn't sound right. Age of Humanity? Something like that. Um, very, 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 very looking forward to this. The song is called One Day Closer to the End of the World. If you like very aggressive music, it is the band for you to check out. And last one is one that I completely did not know anything about. I don't know how I've managed to avoid it for so long. Tiny Moving Parts have a new album coming out. They are, if you're unaware, they are a... How do you describe it? Like, twinkly emo crossed with post-hardcore. Um, a bit shouty and a bit more aggressive than standard emo, but the guitar work on it is fucking unreal. Um, the album's going to be called Breathe, and it's out... Tomorrow, as I record this, I found out about it yesterday, already pre-ordered it, and it already said it's on its way. I'm very, 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 very excited at the end. I'm very, very excited about a lot of things this week, as it turns out. Oh, fuck. I'm hitting my things now. Um, there's three songs at the moment. You've got Medicine, which is a bit more pop-punk than I really know Tiny Moving Parts for. Vertebrae is more of an upbeat ballad kind of thing. And then Bloody Nose, which is the first song I had, and it's my favourite out of the three. 
it is the most traditional tiny moving parts out of three. It's, the sound is overall in all three songs just sounds bigger. The uh, previous album Swell f- sounded very. What's the best way to describe it? It, it? it just sounded very independent. I think that's like something to do with the production job or whatever, but it just sounded very independent. This sounds like it's got a lot more power behind it and a lot more effort behind it. Not from the band because they're brilliant, but way more production sort of wise. Um, and it's really nice to get now albums so soon. Swell only came out last year, you know, and I'm a bit annoyed that I completely ignored or just did not notice the fact they're having a new album out. So it's called Breathe. It's by Tiny Moon Park. It's going to be coming out tomorrow as I say this. Do go find them because Tiny Moon Parts are bloody brilliant. I didn't know why it sounded Welsh then. Right then, we'll get on to... Blah, blah. Uh, we'll get on to album reviews then. We're going to start with Sleep Talk and their debut album, Everything in Colour. Sleep Talk hail from that... Just fountain of talent and excitement there in Australia. They come from Adelaide. And it's kind of hard to put a finger on their sound. They were initially explained to me as a kind of like post-hardcore type deal. I did a quick skim of the album to find out whether or not I did want to listen to it. And it kind of made me think maybe easycore sort of stuff. And then the more I've listened to the album as a whole, if you have, if you replace the pop punk in easycore with a being as an ocean style melodic hardcore, I think that's kind of the sleep talk sound. You know, it's very, very dramatic and emotional, but it's also still very upbeat and quite in your face at times. Um, I also think it's got a touch of like goth rock or indie rock in there as well. You know, you've got the so- um, a song called The Sun, which is it's quite upbeat, melancholia, like a vibe about it. For the first half of the song before it shifts into that like dark post-hardcore I was talking about a minute ago. It's it's quite different, I think, to the rest of the song. I know they've got a, another like slow, badly sort of thing. I think it was Shadow. Um... But yeah, this isn't this isn't ballad territory, and it also isn't like the usual sound. And yeah, just the way the guitars verbed and just echoed and that sort of thing. But it made me think like eighties gothic rock sort of stuff. Um, and it, as a whole, it's a fairly liberal mix of those different sounds in the sleep talk spectrum. They jump between those opposite ends of hardcore on the fly and make use of the three vocals they've got. They've got Jacob Clement, who is the harsh vocalist and does a great job. And they've got guitarist Louis Tito and bassist Josh Henley. Healy, sorry. They sort of trade cleans quite well. And if one of the times it's kind of hard to differentiate between the two cleans, but it does make when they do like, especially when they overlap, it does make the vocal line sound a lot bigger. And I do like um, multi-layered vocals, especially like, multi-layered cleans on the back of something a bit more screamy um and like i said i really enjoyed jacob as a vocalist on his own he's got a lot of emotion in his voice and it's a type of scream where you wonder if he is actually under duress and is in a lot of pain um it's got kind of echoes of joel from being as an ocean as mentioned earlier or bart from birds in row and that kind of vocal style does meld really well with the lyrics um, there is a fair share of like super broody hardcore literature in the lyrics. Uh, if I die at 27, I hope the white light is not too far away. Uh, dark thoughts in the night, screaming kill, kill, kill. Well, just two kills, just the two kills. And can you teach me how to love myself? Can you teach me how to be? Nothing more than a permanent stain on your memory. Do, 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 do. Poetry. Um, yeah, it's really good lyrically. And like I said, with those three combining, I think it does it's executed really well with those tri-vocal attack, I've called it, because I'm apparently living in Pokemon. Uh, Loritzen, I think that's how it's called, track one. Loritzen? Yeah. I don't know how else I would, I would pronounce it, but I feel like it just doesn't feel right on my tongue. Loritzen, Kill, and If I Die operate more on that like emo hardcore uh, level. There's enough echo and delay to give it that broader sound, but just not enough to say like post-rock comparisons. Um, the title track, Allergic to the World and New Tradition, probably closer to a more defined, excuse me, uh, metalcore sound. There's still like the drips and drabs of the melodic hardcore in there, but 
I feel like if you had to just use one genre name, because I don't usually like doing that, um, it would be more than that, like, out and out, in-your-face, metalcore sort of thing. My friend at work recommended me this, so you can thank a guy called Tom. Um, he collects vinyl, so you know he's doing his bit for the music industry. Um, he discovered to me as something a little bit different, and I would 100% say he's right. It is too streamlined and too, like, in-your-face, like I said, to be, like, a touche amore, emotional hardcore, you know, sympathizer. Um... But I think there's too much going on in terms of a broad sound to be considered a like a metalcore band just with a sad, fancy hat. Um, I must admit, though, I found it just a little samey. Just a, like, um, there was a couple of songs that really stood out to me. So um, the title track, Everything in Colour, really popped at me. If I Die as well, really, really stood out to me. I think I end up, if it was a four-track EP of Luritzen... Everything in Colour, If I Die and Kill. That would be a really good release, which kind of, I think that's more of an insult than it is a compliment, but I'm not, again, I'm not very good at this. Um, but even at its most varied, you have a really powerful song like If I Die, or that like dark ballad you saw song that said with Shadow. It all sort of just melds into each other. It's not, because they've got that core sound, they don't really deviate too much out of that core sound even when they how can i describe it when they do something like the sun or would it have the shadow it still feels like they've got the same effects on the guitar so it all sounds quite on one level you know other bands they like play around with tuning and how they use their guitar and how that sort of thing it just all sounds like you just came in plugged it in played something really interesting but just constantly at that one level i don't know I know what I'm trying to say in my head, but I don't think it's coming out as well as I want it to. Um, I'm still a big fan of Jacob's vocals. I do think he's a... It really, really is a fun vocalist. Um, I don't know why I said fun. Um, and there are, like I said, those four songs that really, really slay. They are... Like, If I Die is really, really impactful. When you're just like, listen to it quite casually, and then you've got a big thunderous beat with the screams of If I Die... Um, at 27 which two years away I can start singing that song unironically it's like 22 by Taylor Swift so when it does extend into that more melodic hardcore and does get um, a bit more dramatic it is a lot it is a lot better in my opinion as opposed to like the more out and out metalcore stuff and even when they go like really blue, broody on the goth rock stuff um but just as a rounded piece, it felt very okay. It's not as much as I say, like, I dislike this album. It's just... The bits that stood out really stood out, but everything else just caught, sort of melted together. You know? Um, but if you like that kind of world, I think this will be... Enough in that kind of melodic hardcore, um, like, dark hardcore, dark metalcore sort of thing, to, like... If you're into that sort of thing, give it a listen, because I do think it expands so much out of those different places, it is worth a listen to. But, you know, you don't learn these things without giving it a try. I could have just said, no, it's not for me, and fucked off. But it's called Everything in Colour. It is the debut album from the whatever core, oh, fuck, whatever core band from Adelaide in Australia. If, I mean, that's, a, that's a good work I can do. If you like Australian metalcore, because there's fucking loads of it, I don't know what's happening down there, but if you like Australian hardcore, Gives us a go because it's it does does that and more, you know. I don't know. Fuck you. On to then. Actually, no. I'm gonna have a swig of tea first. There we go. That's much better. On to then. Trying to Google this was I. It was kind of weird because the band is called Minor Love and the album is called Good but Not Great. So typing in Minor Love, Good but Not Great, might not look great on your uh, search history, but. Once you finally find the album, you're going to have a great time, and we'll get to that. It's the second album from the Dayton, Ohio-based Twinkly Emo band. Um, if <laughs> I've just described the sound of Tiny Moving Parts. If you are already familiar with Tiny Moving Parts, imagine that, but if they cried more, and you'll end up with Minor Love. Um, this was exceptionally good fun. I, like, popped at this almost immediately. Um... The Woodley guitars in the album just don't feel overblown at all. 
you know they're not the constant center of attention center of attention which you know you're gonna have bands who i can play really cool stuff on the guitar this is all i can do like this is there's a song to go there as well lads come on um some of the like vocal hooks in the album are just so smooth as smooth as butter and like that really good shit too like lure pack fucking amazing in the opening track food party um you've got you can find me where the sun meets the sea and the fish are friendly in the ocean i think because the album is really really and um and underground really independent i couldn't find the official lyrics anywhere and i searched for a really long time so i had to try and figure it out for myself and i'm apparently not very good at this um but even so just the way um what's his name i wrote it down somewhere joey collar his execution and the vocals are fucking on point they're so good it feels very poetic and i think he's just got a really good accent for it which it's probably really annoying for other vocalists because they go for years of like vocal training or like trying to get it right and then you just get a guy like this who's just got a fun um accent and then just nails it straight away so you just you just can't teach that you can teach learn how to sing but to have a fun accent that's just genetics mate um you got more of that like fun poetic delivery as well in when i want um, my knees give out, my hands get sweaty, makes me think that I'm not quite ready. That's just really fun to have bopping in your head all day, because it will get bopping in your head all day. Um, musically, it, I'm qu really quite interested in the guitar tone of um, Corey Penkal. hope that's how you pronounce his name. Um, in, yeah, in the nicest way possible, it sounds very basic, the guitar tone. Like, if you've ever, anyone who's ever tried to learn how to play guitar, you've got that really basic first setup where you just plug in your guitar plug in the amp and just you know it's not quite bluesy but it's not quite what you want it to sound like if you want to be a punk rock guy or a heavy metal guy or whatever it sounds very like that but the way he plays it and the way and what he does with that tone it does give it its own identity and does carry a lot of the songs and weirdly of all places to go to when think when listening to a twinkly emo band from dayton ohio i got weird fifa vibes you know how fifa always has like loads of indie rock vibe especially in the olden days like i've first noticed it on a song called life as a teenage robot uh by the way some of the names on this album are fucking great um on life as a teenage robot the bridge that comes after the chorus sent me back to like fifa 04 on the ps2 like the stomp of the drums followed by that little guitar lick just it was weird it was weird i don't like remembering my youth because it's not always full of good memories um we're going to makeover makeover is another really, really good song a little bit more straightforward than the other songs on the album and has a lot more of the kind of like older minor love sound as well and by that i mean they use a bit more harsh vocals and i'll get touch on the harsh vocals a little bit more in a bit and from makeover you go into my chemical bromance you, you got Mike and Mogo Bromance, you got We Need a Disney Princess That Drinks Bong Water, My Life as a Robot, That's a Teenage Robot, Finna Give You a Noogie, um, Virus Free MP3 to EXE. Some of these fucking lot song names are brilliant. Um, Mike and Mogo Bromance. bromance. Um, it's a super straightforward, it's a super emotional and super dramatic song. Kind of have a little whiff of loud dispute about it, um, it's where it's like, poetry backed by a little bit of music in the background before eventually exploding into that like theatrical finale of the summation of the band sound um and part of that finale excuse me i'm doing that thing again um part of that finale uses um harsh vocals which as a whole they're fairly scarce on the album no across the board the debut album which i did not write down because i'm a twit um makes much more liberal use of harsh vocals and in releases since i did have like a quick skim over the mind of discography in releases since and a couple of eps they've done a couple of singles the amount they use harsh vocals does decrease and the like noodly guitar does increase at this point i'd honestly say scrap the harsh vocal completely 
I think uh, Joey has enough of a good vocal that he can probably carry the songs by himself vocally. Um, and like Corey's guitar playing does also fill in those gaps of what would be like a more like any other time would be like an aggressive scream or something like that. I think he can do, he's a good enough guitarist. He can do something to fill that gap. Um, when they are used on good, but not great. I wouldn't say they were wholly out of place, but like with Joe, with Corey, Corey and just like the general layered vocals that they use for just like as backing vocals. I think that could easily replace any, of the harsh vocals and just have it, have it as an out and out emo record with just like no screamo or no hardcore mix in there that's just me though i thought like my favorite parts of the album weren't the parts where they were screaming or using any sort of harsh vocal um it is a joyous blink and you'll miss a kind of eclectic emo um i think it only goes on for about half hour 20 minutes and the label it's on as well it's on a label called acrobat unstable and it's becoming a really, really interesting label to keep an eye on. Um, the When I Say Jump album and the Problematic EP from earlier this year were both on Acrobat and Stable. They had an album, or like a compilation a couple of years ago, I think, that I listened to. And I really, really enjoyed some songs in that. So if you like really, really different and really, really out there, but also quite underground, emo and hardcore... Check out Acrobat and Stable because I think they are they are a little little like nest egg of really good good music to, to find. And part of that good music is Minor Love. The album's called Good but Not Great. If you like really emotional but really really twinkly music, do give it a go. It's been a fucking blast to listen to that. Very very good stuff indeed. Right then, on to the last album of this week and an album that literally literally has made me quite cross to try and talk about it is the fifth album from that their tool it's called fear in Auckland. i'm sure you would have heard of it by now they are based in la um very arty progressive metal kind of thing it's been 13 years since we had a tool album it's felt fucking longer because all these fucking tool heads just keep going on and on about a new tool album hashtag tool memes um I've never really, well, I, surprise, I've never gone in on Tool, aside from a couple of songs here and there. Um, I think the title track from Anima and a song called H, which is from a, is it Opia EP? Both really, really good songs. And I do feel like if I gave Tool, like especially old school Tool, the time to listen to it back when they were a bit more heavier, I think I'd really come to like Tool. And I don't, straight away, I want to say, I don't dislike Fear and Oculum. It's going to sound like I'm very negative. I don't dislike it at all. The response to Fear and Oculum has largely been, if you like it, then everyone's like, of course you'd like it. It's Tall. No one's ever allowed to say anything bad about Tall. If you happen to dislike or you've got things that you'd prefer than what is there, it's, well, aren't you a fucking cool boy? Now aren't you fucking hipster for liking something that, or disliking something that everyone else loves? Attitudes like that are what make people dislike rock music. And it's what makes people dislike music fans altogether. It's just rampant elitism. And I, I'm on a um, Facebook group that talks about music a lot. And if someone says they don't like Tall album, they get a lot of shit for it. Even the people who are behind the group, because it's uh, based around the podcast, they will say, like, oh, we can't have anything nice, can we? And then as soon as someone says, hey, the album's really, really good, you get a few people who are really good and say, like, right, I mean, everyone, you, it's just fucking great, ain't it? And then you get people like, well, fucking, of course you're going to say that, it's tall. Can we talk about something else now? It's just fucking, they have become a very difficult band to talk about because you've just got, like, the, it's just very, you know, you can find, like, the prog fans in general are more, of the more insufferable of all music fans but i think the final level of progressive music fans is tall or tall fans um but trying to listen to it without all that going on as well has been d 
difficult because there's parts I want to say I don't like it. There's parts I want to say I do like it, but I don't know if it's just what I've been told to like or told to dislike or whatever. So I'm going to give it a go. Um, straight away, it is a very complicated mass of sound. Not to the point where I'll call it convoluted or self-obsessed. Every single note and every single beat and every single transition feels like it's cherry-picked to be there and to be there with a purpose. Um, it is just the the thought process and the intelligence behind how the songs are structured, I think it's all been very, very... I was going to say driven, but that's not the right word. And I can't think of a better word other than purpose, which I'm pretty sure I've said three times already. But it's just very, very on purpose. It's very, very... But I don't know why I tried it again, because I still can't think of a word that's not purpose. Something that I found um, quite exceptional, given how much of the talk behind Tool tends to go towards the singer Maynard, or because it's a prog rock, uh, prog album and Tool are a prog band, a lot of talk inevitably goes to the guitarist, in this case Adam Jones. I was most entranced by Daddy Carey's drum playing. Just focusing on him and his little roles and his fills here and there, um... That's the part where I start seeing the bigger picture of Tool and like the bigger picture of creativity of Tool. Um, the, I think it's, I think it's Chocolate Chip Trip where it is a full uh, drum solo and just, I know drum solo is always going to be really, really like interesting and fascinating to watch anyways, but this is just a whole new level. It is... Carry for me has been my favorite part of the album because just listen to him and how he can connect everything together as a rhythm section is just unreal. Um, the as for the music itself and the actual songs themselves, the opening title track um, it acted as the lead single for the album, and at first I did not like it. I uh, just the reputation that got built up from Tall and from fans, um, that imposing figure of Tall. I was expecting it just wasn't there it just wasn't as impactful as I thought it was going to be but you give the song in fact you give the whole album volume you give the whole album headphones or just a de decent speaker system the song Fear in Auckland turns into a fucking great song the chorus is very powerful and I think Maynard sounds bloody brilliant on it um, I think it's structured really well and it flows quite freely but yet quite smoothly so you're not just getting lost in everything that's going on of which there's so much, so much going on. Um, as for the rest of the album, I think this is my first Tool album. And I've seen a lot of people say like it's this isn't the album to win over new fans, it's not going to be the album to like ease people into it it's going to be tall being tall at their most tall like and i believe that it's been it's been difficult to listen to tall and i got the digital version which is nearly an hour and a half long it's got four ambient interludes um which my puny little brain just doesn't handle ambient all that well and like from a technical standpoint it's fucking outrageous it is end game like in terms of a cinematic piece of entertainment art um i really enjoyed the little alien like bass crawl in um, invincible that leads to like the drum and grooves from carrie again um and again i just fucking loved character um drew carrie no danny carrie on this album and tempest goes fucking hard i i must say i really really enjoyed tempest as a song um where everything else is very eclectic and very thought-provoking, I feel like Tempest is a song where, collectively, Tour went, we've had 13 years of people asking us when the next album's going to come along. Let's just let's get all those frustrations out, all those fucking diatribes of when it's happening, when it's happening, when it's happening. Just 13 years of that. Let's just get out of our systems. And I think that's what turned into Tempest. 
Um, and around the 11 minute mark, which is a weird thing to say because song should not go for 10, 11 minutes. But around the 11 minute mark, there's a solo around there, which goes almost thrash metal in its pace with just enough tool madness and it's shredding to remind you just for you listening to. It's just really... Um, almost sounds like, br like a string's breaking during the solo. And it does sound fucking excellent. Um, and to reiterate a point, I don't dislike Fear and Oculum. I'd even maybe go as far as to say I quite enjoyed it. To take it all in is very difficult. And I know people have been going on about people who say that and saying, oh, it's just current generation just hasn't got the right attention span, which, you know, I'd argue because I can't remember half the sh album's names I cover. Um, imagine the fight scene from Endgame lasting a full hour and a half. Or imagine, if you're a wrestling fan, imagine the exciting parts, the most exciting, like the last half of uh, Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole, or The Rock versus Austin at WrestleMania 17, or Taker versus Michaels at WrestleMania 25. Imagine the most exciting parts of that lasting for a full hour and a half. Or, like, British fans, I the only bit of cricket I've ever watched is the Super Over from this year's World Cup between was it, New Zealand and England. That half an hour of cricket that I watched put my heart in my throat the entire time. Imagine that for half an hour, for an hour and a half. Sorry, it is. It is such a struggle to maintain that level of adrenaline and that level of attention for that long. Just focusing on that. It's just you're gonna burn out, and as I said, like the top of the review, I feel like I'm in a knocked loose style trap where, again, I want to enjoy it because everyone says how good this band is and how good this album is but it's got to a point where i'm listening to that so much and people are like people are shitting on people for not liking the album and now am i am i list, trying to force myself into like the album or is it more organic or maybe i just organically don't like it because as i said before i like more straightforward music and i like more punk rock kind of things where it's like over and done in a heartbeat and as i was writing the notes for this um night before last excuse me and i was getting genuinely frustrated and genuinely angry the fact that i can't fathom where i am with this album because of everything else that's happening around around the album and i plan to keep fear and Oklahom in rotation for a couple weeks longer because i feel like it's going to be a very slow burner i don't know if it's going to be like I'm going to get it by the end of the year and it might be in like end of year lists or if it's going to be a year from now I'm going to be like oh shit that is a fucking incredible album let's go back and do the all the tool um, what I am going to do that I'm not going to do the digital version I'm going to go to the CD version which one of the reviews I read kind of was saying that it flows a lot better without those instrumental tracks so it gets rid of Mockingbeat Legion Inoculant and Litany Contre Lapier Gets rid of that, so it's just five songs that are all over ten minutes. Then you've got the Chocolate Chip Trip, and then you've got Tempest. Apparently that flows quite a lot better than the digital version. I'm going to give that a go, see what I'm like with that. And then hopefully in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be able to just put a little thing in there to say, like, hey, Tool, I get it, or I still don't get it. Who knows? Um, I feel like everyone who would have listened to Tool has listened to it by now, but... If you're like me and you've never gone on the tour before, I'd even say Fear and Oculum is going to be diff uh, difficult. Um, I would not say it is the best place. I don't know the tour back catalogue at all, but I still wouldn't say Fear and Oculum is the best place. I do plan to start going back and then start from album one, which was, was it Lateralis? No, Undertow. I do want to start Undertow and just go all the way through Undertow and Ema, Lateralis, 10,000 Days, and then back to Fear and Oculum to see, to get what everyone else has got. Um, I've just realised they've got a song called Hooker with a Penis. That's a weird name for a song. Um, but yeah, if you're unfamiliar at all, it's up to you whether you don't give it a go or not. I'd still say maybe start from the beginning and work your way forward, but if you want to get in it before end of your list, also very much understand that. There, mu there must be something there. It's just... Um, knocked well it beat taylor swift in the number one spot she's arguably one of the biggest pop stars in the world right now and some weirdest shit prog band from la beat her not physically that would be awful but there must be something there so 
yeah keeping it in rotation trying to get my head around it and i'm going to stick to the cd version which apparently does quite a lot better but that is tall well that was fear and Auckland by tall it's album number five from the fucking weirdos from la and that will be the lot for this week next week i won't be here i'm going on holiday how lovely at least this time i'm remembering to tell people i won't be here um, the week after, I plan to catch up on a few things that I've missed out on because I've been trying to listen to Fear and Rocklam. We're going to have Hawkeyes. Definitely going to have Hawkeyes. And in the mix somewhere, hopefully have either all of them or at least a big bulk of Affixion, which is a melodic death metal band. Gold Bloom, um, EP for uh, Pop Punk. Virginity, which is an emo band. And Paladin, which is power metal. And I'll probably try and sneak in um, tiny moving parts in there as well. So, a couple of weeks time probably gonna have a lot i hope so i really want to catch up with music i'm getting so far behind i keep adding more stuff to my list of things to listen to um and i think it was last week i broke 100 releases not 100 albums i think i'm at like 88 albums and like 13 eps now so we'll see what gets album number 100 for the year but that's all to come in two weeks time because holiday i'm going to set the parks how lovely um but until such time if you're like me and you listen to Tool for the first time, let me know how you think about it because I'm genuinely intrigued to find out how other people who've never listened to Tool are finally getting to it for the first time with Fear of Oakland, are finding it, um, and if I'm just completely in the wrong. But let me know what you think of the other bands. We had Sleep Talk, we had Mind and Love, we had Tool. There's loads of new music out at the moment from Fall Out Boy, Don Broker, Weezer, Green Day, Cattle Decapitation, and Tiny Moving Parts. Dab for Tiny Moving Parts. And as for everything else, I will see you in a couple of weeks. Ta-ra!